Hey guys, we're going to put this HH109 on Lorenzo here. So we're going to take down some hair on top. The first thing I needed to be careful of is looking at the back here, trying to decide, uh, do I have a system that'll go this far? And the very first thing I realized is if I tried to go this far, it's a little bit larger than the actual system is. So I'll use a little bit of his hair here and come up a little bit higher. And I've already made a template. I'm going with the plastic mold that comes in the kit. I put it on here and we figured out about where it would go from the front to the back. So I'm going to start taking some hair off the top. <clears throat> As most of you guys that have been in some of my classes know, I don't like to call it shaving the head. You know, it's a little tough on these guys when they're first deciding to do this. They don't want to lose the hair on top. They don't want to call it shaving. They don't want to be thinner. They want more hair, not less hair. So saying shaving sometimes is a little scary because it talks about losing hair and I want to say preparing the top <laughs> taking the hair off the top they figure it out but they're still uh, still a little more at ease than when you say shaving I'm using the template to figure out roughly where this line will go And then we can take this off. We've got a clear line of where we're gonna take hair off on the top of the head. I know a lot of you guys like to use balders. Many barbers like to use balders or foil shavers or whatever you wanna call it in the industry. It's not necessary to take this hair off all the way down to where it's a uh, really really thin thin baby skin feeling because this hair grows back in just a few days anyway so it doesn't need to be so so fine and smooth like a like I said like baby skin it just needs to be uh, pretty short and I will go over it a few times but while I'm while I'm doing this I've got a lot of loose hair everywhere and the main thing I want to do is uh, use a little bit of alcohol. And what I've done is I've put 99% alcohol in this bottom here, in this bottle here. So I'll uh, spray it, get rid of the scalp oil, a little bit of sweat. I won't use a towel at first because I'm trying to get this uh, alcohol and sweat to break down and my fingers won't absorb the alcohol. Whereas a towel, if I put a towel on it right away and start wiping, see it's dry immediately. So I don't get as much time for the alcohol to, to do its job. So here I've wrapped the towel around a couple of fingers and I kind of aggressively will scrub his head so I'm doing a little bit more of an exfoliation as well as cleaning and then let's just get rid of some of this extra hair and we'll clean a couple more times we might even need to clipper just a little bit more I like to let that alcohol do its work. I do find 99% alcohol works so much better, better than 71, 91. There's even 50% out there. The, uh, the more the alcohol content, the faster it breaks down all of that adhesive. One thing I'm noticing that you might not be able to see on camera just yet is a little white flakes of skin. That's a positive sign to me. That means his scalp is getting really, really dry where I'm spraying alcohol. I'm trying to dry up all of that scalp oil and sweat. So yes, I'm not giving him the best look here for a second, but to me that says I'm getting it dry, but it's still a little shiny up here. So I'm gonna go with alcohol a third time now. Break up that oil sweat on a skin system all i have to do is clean the back side of it with alcohol if i had a lace system i would want to shampoo and clarify that hair system you don't want to get it in their eyes either i know we've got to be careful we're not dripping down in these eyes it burns a little but only for a second evaporates really quickly <laughs> but you want to um, clarify a, a lace system because the knots 
of the actual hair or on the back side of that system. If you'll notice on the skin system, there's a, it's not as porous as a lace system, so the knots aren't right there, whereas the water from the hair would wick to the knot and make this uh, wet or oily or maybe a silicone layer from the factory or some sort of conditioning layer. So here, I just want to get it really, really dry and then let it air dry just a minute, maybe even run a blow dryer over the top for just a second. And uh, the drier and cleaner it is, the better the hair system is going to stick when I start to put an adhesive on there. And then I'm going to take this hair system and then do the same thing. Now we're going to take the hair system and clean the back side of it a little bit with alcohol. Again, I like to put my fingers on there and kind of rub it in case there's anything that I'm trying to break down with the alcohol. Whereas if I touched it with a towel right away, it's going to um, absorb that alcohol and not clean. The other thing that's happening right now is when I'm, when I'm uh, rubbing this and cleaning this, I'm cleaning my fingers also so I don't put any oil on the hair system or on his head. Now, I wrap like this and wipe pretty aggressively on, on a person's skin. I'm doing it to take off a layer of skin, the dead skin layers, the oil, whatever I need to break down. And it evaporates so quickly, I'm pretty safe there that just after a few seconds, I mean, if you wanted to blow dry it, just fan it a little bit, it'll evaporate and dry pretty quickly. Let's take this system and do a little bit of a dry fit. And I just want to kind of show you, if we didn't have, if we didn't have a, uh, a template at all. I want to show you a technique that we could use. We can kind of look at the tan on his forehead to see where he might have been wearing a system before. Many people will use a four finger technique. Uh, not that that's the most professional technique, but something that uh, we put covered in other videos is that this distance here is the same as from here to here, which is also the same here. So a lot of people find it's about four fingers. Now I know everybody's fingers are different sizes. So if you find you have little bitty fingers and you do this, it might be one extra finger. I've been doing this for years and I know if I bury my pinky into the, 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 the little dent right there on their nose and I'll put four fingers together, that is most people's front hairline right there. One other thing I'll do is ask them to like wrinkle up your forehead a little bit. Just kind of raise your eyebrows. There you go. When you raise your eyebrows, you can kind of see he almost had a little bit of a widow's peak. It kind of came down to a point you don't have to give that back to them. Most people didn't like Widow's Peaks when they were kids, but if they did and you want to, it's fine also. But I can see that that hairline is right in this area. So I'm going to draw it right now as a, as a little bit of a starting point and then kind of see where that falls when I go to put this hair system on. I'll start with the front. I'm letting that tag hang down in the back, trying to find the center in the front. Go ahead and look down a little bit, a little bit more. There you go. So as it starts to come here, let's see how it touches down. I'm going to go with a uh, no template technique here for a second. I may revert back to the template, but as, as I'm putting this down, if all of these marks work correctly, this is what could happen. This might be my center mark for putting the system down. And this right here might be my first mark for where I would cut the size of this system that would match his head. If it's correct in the front, I'm going on a few guesses right now, but we'll double check that in a minute before we make any, any decisions that are, that are definite and forever long term for this hair system. So as I'm rolling it down, it's not sliding around. I'm noticing this is a little off to the side. So that's my first clue that this whole system might be pivoted, but sometimes they don't put the tag in exactly the center in the back, though they usually do. It looked like that front was centered to me and looked really good and I might be wasting my time putting these marks right now, but I think it was worth putting these marks around the edges and I can just cut along these lines. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good here in the front. Let's see what that first mark, if it lines up where we put it, it does. That first mark was there. So we're going to bring more marks here down the center for where the system goes. And this was a little out in front of where I wanted the system to end up. And this would be that last 
last spot right here in the front where if this mark matches when I'm putting this system on, all of these others should match pretty good. But we'll also cut this system down to fit his head before we even put it on. So this is something I teach in some other videos also. I'm going to put adhesive on his head about a pencil's distance above the line I'm putting in right here. So this line that I'm putting in is just a reference line. I don't need all of this line, so let's get rid of that front line there. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. The hair system is going to get cut along this line here to go smaller. And then all of a sudden, this is where the actual system is. But I'll put adhesive above this reference line. Sometimes this reference line is a little confusing to people. But it kind of come together as we start to put the system on. I'm going to remember my line's a little closer on this side and a little further on this side. It's okay because I'm going to put adhesive a little closer to the line here, a little further away on that side. One last little mark right there. And as long as I don't take any of these marks off, that should work really good on his head. So let's cut this out. 